Weekend is always too short for the things we want to do. Even worse is when we realize that we have to gear up to take on our responsibilities the next day. But worry not, Priya is here to share with you some very interesting stories to lift your mood and make you feel better. So join me on this fun ride called Z Connect and end your weekend in style. The secret of joy in work is contained in one word, excellence. To know how to do something well is to enjoy it. Our guest on Offbeat is someone who enjoys what he does and he excels when he is under threats. Don't believe me? Check him out for yourself. Hello, my name is Ahmed Atallah. I'm a cybersecurity student in the American University in the Emirates. Uh, I was born in Egypt and uh, I lived uh, in the United Arab Emirates, Dubai, since I was 10 years old. Um, I loved studying cybersecurity since I was 13 years old. So I have done self studies, searching for information on YouTube, uh, overthinking how things get hacked. I have started my um, self studying uh, since a couple of years back and uh, uh, now I ended up starting my career in cybersecurity, organizing cybersecurity competitions and engineering how uh, complicated hacking challenges are built uh, for such professional hackers and even young hackers to practice. So what I love the most about the cybersecurity and even my job is the overthinking and the stress that comes along with this job. Like you. Sometimes uh, there is a cyber attack happening and you need to look at it and you need to analyze what's going on. So yeah, the uh, suspense, the stress and uh, the action associated with uh, the, the job is uh, the most interesting part of it. One of the challenges that I really face in my job, um, speaking from the defensive perspective, is that there is no exact limit or time for the hackers to attack you, to attack your client, or to attack the government that you're protecting. The attack can come from anywhere at any time, and you cannot imagine how it might impact the, uh, the entity or even the country that you're protecting if you're not, uh, if you're not sharp in your job, if you're not uh, mature enough in your job. It might end up uh, shutting down the whole systems of the country. So the most remarkable point and the memorable point in my career so far is organizing and engineering Dubai Police uh, CTF competition. It was uh, held uh, last year in 2020 and it was an online event uh, engineered for the UAE students to join. Um, and how can we achieve the most outcome of this event and allow the students to practice their hacking skills in a very controlled environment, in a safe environment, away from any dangers. Uh, nowadays, social media has a lot of dangers related to how to secure your own accounts, how to secure your pictures from getting leaked, etc. Um, so I would say that the only way to hack into social media um, is through the phishing attack vector. So phishing is simply someone sending you a malicious link and this link um, might open up a fake page for you to enter your cred credentials or to steal your uh, login cookies. So the only way to protect yourself from this is to um, follow the awareness campaigns, follow the tips sent to you by the uh, social media provider. Um, do not open uh, suspicious links. So there are multiple, um, multiple sectors in cybersecurity, but speaking about uh, the main ones, um, we have the red team, which is the offensive guys. Uh, which is the offensive department. These guys go and hack into stuff 
they break into the websites, they break into environments so that they can expose the vulnerabilities and report it so that these vulnerabilities get fixed so the bad guys cannot be able to hack into it. Uh, there is also the blue side or the blue team which is uh, specialized into just defensive skills. Um, they do monitoring, they do uh, threat hunting, they do a lot of defensive work and they are just there to wait and hunt for any bad guys coming or trying to attack. And then there is in the middle uh, the purple team. Purple team is specialized into um, digital forensics. So for example, if uh, there is an attack that is already have happened, um, they come and investigate uh, who, who is the attacker and how did this attack uh, happen. So these are the main, uh, three main types. Also there is the uh, green team. So the green team is basically about teaching cybersecurity training and stuff. Sometimes you might hear about uh, big companies getting hacked, such as Facebook, such as Google, such as Microsoft. These companies have a program called Bug Bounty Program. So this is um, like uh, a legal way to allow the hackers all around the world to hack into Facebook. But when you hack into Facebook, you need to actually write a report and send it to Facebook so that Facebook comes back to you and say thank you you have done a really great job and you have done it in a legal way here is your money reward so this is something called bug bounty and that is available for everyone to start with that but we need to have uh, cyber security basics we need to have the uh, uh, maturity level to start into bug bounty bug bounty is a really huge industry nowadays and the big companies google facebook they spend millions every year for the bug hunters so bug hunters are the ethical hackers that work in this bug bounty uh, platform or this bug bounty program. Um, so it's really growing industry. And uh, uh, nowadays we are seeing uh, bug bounty programs for the countries as well. And nowadays we have uh, KSA, Saudi, uh, we have the bug bounty program. And uh, soon, inshallah as well, we, we will be having uh, the United Arab Emirates bug bounty uh, program as well so uh, yeah it is a really huge industry and um, it, it is really growing uh, one of the challenges that really uh, i really struggle with um, sleeping i don't have enough time to sleep <laughs> uh, i don't find enough time to hang out with my, with my friends um, so yeah it might be a challenge challenging a little bit to organize your time and uh, try to make the balance between your social life and your career life because as you know a cyber security job is really really sensitive and it might need more attention compared with normal daily jobs. to bring you the secrets of easy cooking right after this short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Meals that don't require lengthy instructions or exotic ingredients are a recipe for success. Learn from Chef Dipti in Pinch of Health to create your own spur of the moment wholesome meals. Hola guys, welcome to Pinch of Health. I'm back with another super quick and easy recipe. Today's dish is inspired from the Mexican cuisine and this dish is called One Pot Chicken Mexican Quinoa. My favorite part about this recipe is all the work goes into the prepping of the ingredients itself. And the second best thing is that I'll be only using one pot, hence it saves you all the hassle of cleaning. Now let's get to cooking. Here I'm using a deep dish pan because all the ingredients will be added into the pan at once. Once the pan is hot, add about 2 tablespoons of olive oil. So once the oil is slightly hot, add in your chicken cubes. Here I have used chicken breast because it is high in proteins and less in fat. I have used about 200 grams of chicken. To this, add about a half teaspoon of pepper powder and a half teaspoon of salt. Make sure you don't add a lot of 
uh, salt into this because the chicken broth will have a little bit of salt. Give this a quick stir until the pinkishness of the chicken fades out. Once the chicken is no more pink, I will be adding in the chopped onions, which is about one cup. And while this is cooking, let's just smash two cloves of garlic. This one and one on. And add this to the pot. Give it a quick stir again. Once the onions are slightly soft, go ahead and add the bell pepper. One cup bell pepper. So there I have added yellow and next I'll be adding red. And green bell peppers. So adding three different types of bell peppers not only gives color but it also gives a very good texture to the dish. While well, here I'm adding plain diced tomatoes. You can also pre-roast the tomato, so it gives a very good smoky flavor to the dish. Here, I'm just adding one cup tomatoes. You close this for about one to two minutes and let it cook. Once all the vegetables are slightly mushy, let's add in red kidney beans, about one cup. If you're a vegetarian, instead of the chicken, just add in more beans and vegetables. Next, I'll add about half cup of corn. Give it a good mix. And in this, I'll add a one cup chicken broth. We'll close this and bring it to boil. So it's almost one to two minutes and I can see that the chicken broth is boiling. At this stage, I will be adding about half cup of quinoa. Alternatively, you can also use brown rice or white rice. So here I'm adding about half cup. This is going to take about 15 to 20 minutes to cook. Give it a good stir. At this stage, if you feel that the broth is less, just add in some more plain water to this. For every one cup of quinoa, you will require about one, one and a half cup of water. And to this, add one teaspoon of paprika powder. And then add about half teaspoon of cumin powder. Give it a good mix. Cover this and cook for about 15 to 20 minutes. Halfway through, like about after 10 minutes, just open it and give it a stir so that it does not stick on the base of the pan. You can pick and check if the quinoa is done. Just try to press it, but do not make it very mushy. Make sure it's slightly crunchy. I'm going to close it and cook for another 5 minutes. So it's almost five minutes and my dish is ready. I'm going to give it a quick stir. So at the end, I'm just going to let it for about one minute closed so that all the flavors just get mixed in and settle. Meanwhile, let's get a dish to plate it. I'm going to add a slice of lemon to this. I love giving the whole dish a good presentation. So while I will garnish it with some coriander on top, I'm also going to add a slice of avocado to give it a more authentic touch. I'm 
just going to place it on the side. And on this, I'm going to just sprinkle some paprika powder. Garnish with a little bit more of coriander. And add in a squeeze of lemon. Now that the garnish is done, the dish is ready to eat. So for the sweet indulgence today, I'm going to be making a berry yogurt spread. So I will be substituting the regular yogurt with Greek yogurt because this is more rich and creamy in texture. It also has less sugar. It has a tart-like taste that gives the acidity. Now this acidity helps your body to absorb the rest of the nutrients. Also, if you're lactose intolerant, this substitution would be a great choice. Now let's get to the process. In a bowl, add about 300 grams of Greek yogurt. To this, add about one tablespoon of honey. You can vary the amount of honey based on how sweet you like. Give it a mix. To this, add the blueberries. Mix it and to this, add a zest from the orange. This balances out the acidity of the Greek yogurt. While also gives you a very nice flavor. Add about half a cup of mixed berries. So I'm going to give it a mix and then just layer it like that. Sprinkle the leftover berries on top. Now to this, there's another variation. You can pick this and put it up in the fridge for about two to four hours. And then it turns out into a very hard bark. Something like this, which I've already made before. Today, I'll be using it as a spread. Now move it to a bowl. Now let's top this with some pistachios, some almonds, a little bit of honey and top this with a blueberry. And there you go, the berry yogurt spread is now ready. I can't wait to have my one pot chicken Mexican quinoa and the berry yogurt spread. So now here's a tip for you. The leftover of this, just put it in a fridge and use it as a filling for burritos or tostadas the next day. And the berry yogurt spread, you can freeze it and use it as yogurt bars and enjoy them as a mid-meal snack. I hope you guys try these recipes at home. Let me know your feedback. I will be back again next week. Until then, keep watching Z Connect. Let's take a quick recap. For one pot chicken quinoa, heat the pan, add two tablespoons of olive oil. Once the oil is hot, add 250 grams chicken cut into cubes, pepper powder, half teaspoon, salt, half teaspoon, add chopped onions, smash two cloves of garlic and add it to the pot. Time to add the mixed bell peppers, one cup diced tomatoes, Steam it for about 2 minutes, add 1 cup red kidney beans, add half cup corn, 1 cup chicken broth and bring it to boil. Then add half cup of quinoa, add 1 teaspoon paprika powder, half teaspoon cumin powder, cook for about 5 to 6 minutes, pour it out on a deep dish, garnish with lemon, coriander and avocado. For the berry yogurt spread, 300 grams Greek yogurt, 1 tablespoon honey, add a few blueberries, orange zest, add half a cup of mixed berries and give it a good mix. Sprinkle the leftover berries on top, garnish with the almonds and pistachios. Drizzle some honey and place a blueberry on top. Time for a quick break again, but after this, we are taking you to meet an artist whose art is a cut above the rest. Welcome back. 
Our guest on Spotlight today is Masarat Fatima, who has recently been bestowed with the Golden Visa for her contribution to the art scene in the UAE. She turns sheets of paper into visual treats. Her mastery in this art is a proof that when you dedicate yourself to feeding your hunger for creation, everything that you get your hands on can indeed be turned into gold. Hi everyone, I'm Masarat Fatima. I'm from India. I'm an artist who specializes in paper cut art. I have founded Artisan Design. I've been living in Dubai for now 10 years and have started my paper cut art like five years back. I was always passionate about paper. It feels like a medium with which I can express myself deeply. The art form that I do is a very traditional art form. It has roots in many countries, including India. In India, it is called Sanji art, which is a, a form of traditional devotional art. My journey was started because of my dad. Seeing him paint and bringing that colors, give color to my life. That inspired me to pursue fine arts. I graduated from India, specializing in applied arts. Once coming back here, I wanted to do something more, something different than uh, uh, fine arts as well as painting. So hence, I started uh, creating a different kind of art. And once I wanted to give a gift to my niece, and just by accident it happened, it, an idea came, okay, I, ca I can cut it with knife. And that's how my journey of paper cut art started. And slowly while discovering and experimenting with paper, it also helped me discover myself. I have been in UAE for 10 years now, but my paper cut art journey is around five years old. I, uh, I was lucky enough, I got many good platform in UAE. I displayed my work at Sikka Art Festival, World Art Dubai, along with other venues. Recently, I uh, displayed my work at Consulate General of India, Dubai. Uh, as a part of Azadika Amrut Mahotsav, India at 75. I was really very happy and excited to be a part of uh, this celebration, especially being abroad. And along with that, uh, creating uh, paper cut art, I also create display and um, uh, visual merchandising for brands. It, uh, it gives a little bit of commercial aspect to my art. Although paper cut art is a very traditional art form, but very few people know about it and be, uh, very few artists specialize in that. Recently, now people are uh, acknowledging the art and appreciating it, not just the fine, uh, fine arts part of it, but also about the commercial aspect of it. This art can also be used in photography, visual mer uh, merchandising, and also uh, in a traditional form of art. So it is kind of a multi-purpose art. I am inspired by many artists. One of them is Vincent van Gogh for the soles and the, uh, the flow of the painting. And in paper cut art, uh, I like uh, Jeff Kanishka, Carlos Miera. They do amazing paper sculpture, giving the depth in that work that inspires me to create better art. Thank you for having me on Z Connect. I have prepared something very special for Z Connect audience. You will see it now. My art is inspired by sp uh, spiritual journey, human journey and emotional journey of a person. The process of my art is I start with just rough sketch, making few sketches. Then tracing it on the paper and then comes the process of cutting the paper. Sometimes I like to go freehand just cut as uh, the hand moves which gives very expressive strokes. On the uh, contrary to that, sometimes when I do portraits or geometrical designs, I go for a very precise, tiny, detailed cut, which gives the uh, proper imaging of the entire artwork.
that we come to the end of this episode we will meet again same place same time with some amazing content and updates for you till then keep sharing your feedback your thoughts with us on our social media handles take care see you soon